Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Texas serves as a basis for this morning's meditation, comes to us from the Gospel lesson from Mark chapter 4. And as you see, laid before you the sermon title, Those Words of Jesus, Peace. Be still. So for the words of our text for us this day. The name of Jesus Christ, who is our only Savior from sin, death, the power of the devil, dear friends, in his name. As we get to this part of Mark chapter 4, we find Jesus teaching, not a surprise, as we enter into the text laid before us. Jesus doing what he is normally doing, using parables and teaching and sharing just recently, last week, we heard about the, the seed that grows, and we know not how it does it. And then, of course, that wonderful parable of the mustard seed, how small it is, and yet how grand it becomes, how God uses us in so many different ways. These are parables of faith, and yet after a long, hot day, it shouldn't surprise us that Jesus needs to move on. Be nice to stay, but tomorrow will probably be a long day as well. Five days of little ones running around here got this guy a little bit tired. So I can only imagine Jesus, true man, feeling maybe a little mentally exhausted over the throngs of people continuing to pull at him each and every day. For by now, he has been doing some wondrous things. And of course, the people clamor to try to get a, to get a glimpse or a, get a word or maybe a, maybe a small miracle from Jesus. And so, human after all, as we know, it's time for a little break. It's good for us to jump in the boat, make our way to the other side and cool off a little bit to take a breath. As we look at this text, I'm going to kind of take us through each verse today, a little more narrative in terms of looking at this and take it a step as we look at this text and see how things continue to build throughout these words. We already looked at verse 35 on that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. The day is done, the work's been finished, let us depart. And leaving the crowd, they took with him, with him, with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. So here's the picture. Beautiful evening, sun is getting to set, winds are calm, waters are good, not a problem or a trouble in sight. And even if they were, Jesus has professionals in the boat with him. So there's not a need to care as they shove off, so to speak, from shore. The boat's probably plenty big. So Christ settles in for a little nap to take a sleep. And then we hear these words of verse 37. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. Out of nowhere, a storm arises. As I've studied a little bit of this land, I've yet to go there, maybe someday, it wasn't uncommon where this water is that there could be storms coming off these mountains not too far away. And so that wasn't uncommon, maybe not to this extent, certainly, but it wasn't uncommon. And yet, you can hear the voices, James, John, get over here, we got to settle this thing down. As the wind picks up, the water begins to come in, hey guys, let's gather together, we got to get a bucket and get out this water. We got to start bailing. Things have gotten Worse. Tighten the sail. Hold firm to the rudder. Everybody grab their oar. Balance it as best as you can. It's getting too much. 
It's too much for us to handle. We're getting behind and we're too far out now. We can't turn around and go back. In the midst of this, we hear these words from Mark. But he, meaning Jesus, was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. In the midst of all the chaos, Jesus is still tucked under, sleeping. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Rabbi, can't you see what's happening? I can't believe you're still sleeping. Do you not care? It shows us the humanity of these disciples. They have seen plenty from Jesus. And yet in the midst of the storm, maybe we'd do the same. We'd be thinking of ourselves and the peril that's around us. Knowing Jesus, Rabbi, teacher, do you not care that we're about to die? How could you be sleeping? Even more so, how could you not help us and make things better now? And he awoke, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Just like that. Instantly. Mark likes to use those type of words in his book. Immediately. Instantly. To let us know it wasn't a little time, wasn't a few minutes. But right away he says those words and boom. The winds die down. The waves become calm once again. And can you imagine, even though on this side of the cross, we look back and we read this and we look at it and go, well, yeah, of course Jesus could do it. Put yourself in the boat and you, I think, would marvel like they do. How can this be? They should know, but they don't. And they marvel at how someone could do such an act. He speaks, and the sea is calm once again. Who is this man that creation obeys him? And that's where we get... He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Whew. Harsh words, and yet... Accurate words, not just for them, but for us, as we consider this text for today as well. And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? First, verse 40. You can almost see in Jesus' face as he looks at these disciples, as he looks at these followers... I've taught you so much. You've seen so much in me, my power, my wisdom. And yet you still don't understand. You still don't get it. You still don't believe. In our lives, we have moments where we should handle them better, maybe many. And yet we wonder. And the water and the winds build up in our lives as well. And many times, rightly so. Maybe it's a routine checkup. You've been doing great, you're going to the doctor, and you're waiting for the doctor to say the things you're waiting for. It'd be nice if you ate a little better. It'd be nice if you exercised a little more. Be nice if you dropped a few pounds or maybe held back on the sugar or the sweets or whatever it might be. But you're going, you know what, as a whole, I'm, I feel pretty good. And then the checkup comes back and they're worried because they see a spot. And your boat starts to shake a little bit. And our temperature rises a little bit as we wonder 
what could this be? We need to do some more tests. And after some done, oh, we have found another one, and it's bigger than the first one. And now the winds and the waves of your life, of your boat, are really starting to rock. Maybe even in the midst of that, you might wonder what's going on, or God, where are you? Do you care that this is happening to me? Or maybe it's a couple that have had a wonderful anniversary meal. They've been married a long time, and their life is good. Their marriage is good, as solid as it's ever been. And as they pull around the corner of the road in which they're driving back home, a deer, another car, something jumps out in front of them, pulls in front of them, bang. A beloved spouse who just a minute earlier were laughing and listening to the radio, sharing and rejoicing in the meal and the dessert that they had that they never usually do. And the boat is rocked. What am I going to do? How am I going to move forward as this scene unfolds? We have these and other things that rock our boats. Fifteen months now of things rocking our boats just recently. Let alone the things that have happened to you and to me when we were little and as we were growing up in our families, in our workplaces, in our schools. We'd take a lot of time if we went around the entire sanctuary and had everybody share five or six things that have rocked your boat during your life. We'd learn a lot about each other, and maybe that would be a good thing. We certainly have been through a lot, each of us. We've gone from the calm and the normal to a boat that's about ready to flip and is filling up with water, and we don't know what to do. Even in our faith, we may question, where are you, God? Don't you care? Look at my life. Look at what's going on here. Things are not normal or not good. They're awful. Where are you? In the midst of the storm, we still hear those words, I pray, peace, be still. I am here. In the doctor's office, on the side of the road, in the bedroom upstairs, wherever those things are happening that are rocking our boats, Jesus is there with us. We don't know what tomorrow will hold, but thanks be to God we know the one who holds tomorrow doesn't mean in an instant like in the text the cancer is going to go away our loved one's going to come back but thankfully we know who holds us even when we're all alone we're never all alone in those moments where we ask the question how can i cope with this how can I deal with this? Or in those moments when we're done, we're finished and say, I can't do it anymore. God continues to press himself into our lives saying, don't give up. I am still here. Psalm 94 verse 14, the Lord will not forsake his people, will not abandon his heritage. That is you. Matthew 28, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That is for you. Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who could be against us? That's for you. Psalm 124, verse 1, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth, who is Lord over the sea and the sky. And if he is Lord over all of that, certainly he can be Lord over me and can handle the things that are coming my way. 
in the midst of the uncontrollable, uncontrollable things, the stress and the chaos that most certainly comes to each one of us more often than we would like. Jesus, his word, his peace is still there. Again, it doesn't mean that our bodies are going to instantaneously be better. That may not be his will. But we know this. His eternal peace never disappears and never fades. And his abiding with you and me is also always with us. That's the joy that we find in his word. Even as we await to see him face to face, he says, well, I'm going to give you something in the in-between. We feast upon it once again today. My body, my blood, given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. His real presence, present this very day. We can trust him to get us through it. Remember, for those of you baptized and confirmed in that word, he has given you an everlasting covenant, a promise to you that he will not break. And in those moments where our boat seems like it's about ready to overturn, he doesn't run away from us, but he runs to us, waving as much as he can so that we might see him and realize he hasn't departed but he's been there all along. There's nothing he hasn't already seen or been through or assisted. Remember, he who knew no sin became sin, even though he was without sin. All of it was placed upon him so that we might be redeemed. And that all means all the things that you've gone through. It's new to us. Sometimes it's devastating to us. He knows that as well. And his son continues to work. The spirit continues to work so that we might stop doubting and believe. That even in the midst of the chaos, we might know true peace and be still. That's my prayer for this and every day that we will continue to cling to him, to trust that he will get us through it, to know that he's already been there and he can take care of us even this day, no matter how big our storm is raging, that as we leave here, this place today, through the word, through the gift of the sacrament, we leave knowing it is well. We can be still because we have his perfect peace. May that be the guiding light in your life today and always. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting.